delayed, Dr. Josh. Joshua replied, You're right, boss. I've seen what a bad drought can do to someone. He said it while looking at me. I know the date. I diarized it in my HR log. I get a little tingle in my nostrils. Joshua's cologne? The pheromone he leeches from his pores? Gross. I flip open his day planner and notice something. A light coat of pencil running down the columns of each day. Feeling incredibly James Bondish, I raise my phone and manage to take one single frame. I hear the cables in the elevator shaft and leap to my feet. I vault to the other side of his desk and manage to slam the planner shut before the doors spring open and he appears. His chair is still spinning gently out of the corner of my eye. Busted. What are you doing? My phone is now safely down the waistband of my underwear. Note to self. Disinfect phone. Nothing. There's a tremor in my voice, convicting me instantly. I was trying to see if it's going to rain this afternoon. I bumped your chair. Sorry. He advances like a floating Dracula. The menace is ruined by the sporting goods store bag loudly crinkling against his leg. A shoebox is in it, judging from the shape. Imagine the wretched sales assistant who had to help Joshua choose shoes. I require shoes to ensure I can effectively run down the targets I am paid to assassinate in my spare time. I require the best value for my money. I am size 11. He looks at his desk, his computer's innocuous login screen, his closed planner. I force my breath out in a controlled hiss. Joshua drops his bag on the floor. He steps so close his leather shoe touches the tip of my little patent heels. Now why don't you tell me what you were actually doing near my desk? We have never done the staring game this close. I'm a pipsqueak at exactly five feet tall. It's been my lifelong cross to bear. My lack of height is an agonizing topic of conversation. Joshua is at least six four. Five, six, maybe more. A giant of a human. And he's built out of heavy materials. Gamely, I maintain eye contact. I can stand wherever I like in this office. Screw him. Like a threatened animal trying to look bigger, I put my hands on my hips. He's not ugly, as I've mentioned, but I always struggle to work out how to describe him. I remember eating my dinner on the couch a while back, and a soft news piece came on the TV. An old Superman comic book sold for a record price at auction. As the white-gloved hand turned the pages, the old-fashioned drawings of Clark Kent reminded me of Joshua. Like Clark Kent, Joshua's height and strength are all tucked away under clothes designed to conceal and help him blend into a crowd. Nobody at the Daily Planet knows anything about Clark. Underneath these button-up shirts, Joshua could be relatively featureless or ripped like Superman. It's a mystery. He doesn't have the forehead curl or the nerdy black glasses, but he's got the strong masculine jawline and sulky pretty mouth. I've been thinking all this time his hair is black, but now that I'm closer, I can see it as dark brown. He doesn't comb it as neatly as Clark does. He's definitely got the ink blue eyes and the laser stare, and probably some of the other superpowers too. But Clark Kent is such a darling all bumbling and soft. Joshua is hardly the mild-mannered reporter. He's a sarcastic, cynical, bizarro Clark Kent, terrorizing everyone in the newsroom and pissing off poor little Lois Lane until she screams into her pillow at night. I don't like big guys. They're too much like horses. They could trample you if you got underfoot. He is auditing my appearance with the same narrowed eyes that I am. I wonder what the top of my head looks like. I'm sure he only fornicates with Amazons. Our stares clash, and maybe comparing them to an ink stain was a tad too harsh. Those eyes are wasted on him. 
To avoid dying, I reluctantly breathe in a steady lungful of cedar. I reluctantly...